Hi, as you know, I interpret vibrational charts, more commonly known as harmonic charts. As you might also know, in Vedic astrology, there's something called Vargas. And Vargas are similar to vibrational charts. There's some overlap of ideas. There are some similarities and some differences. And this sometimes gets confusing because you'll hear in Vedic astrology similar ideas. Well, I'm going to explain what the similarities and differences are. We're also going to look at how the use of Vargas and the interpretation of Vargas has changed over time. We're also going to see some new research on applying Vargas, or we can call them vibrational charts, to uh, heredity, like an astrological heredity, what's in the charts of spiritual gurus, things like this. And we'll see some integration of ideas from Vedic astrology with ideas from vibrational astrology. And we're going to cover a lot of material. This will probably take two or three or four videos. So this will be a series of videos and east-west integration. Okay, so... What are the Vedic Vargas? Well, here we are in the Kepler workshop part of the Kepler and Sirius software, the, the Vedic part of the software. And here are chart wheels. Very often in Vedic astrology, these kinds of chart wheels that look square, we call them wheels, but they're not so round. And a very similar kind of wheel, by the way, was used in the Middle Ages in Europe. So it's a chart wheel. If you're not familiar with this, you're used to the Western style wheels. It can look strange, but it's a chart wheel. And it's broken into 12 sections, which are the houses. So the first house is directly above the square in the middle. We put a number one here, a two, and it goes counterclockwise. Two to the left, and then three, four, five, six, and so on. One thing that's interesting about this kind of chart wheel is that the cardinal houses 1, 4, 7, and 10 are on the inside. So that layout is, is very useful in some ways. Okay, so we're looking at this part of the Sirius software. It's basically the same in the Kepler software where you select the Vargas. And there are 20 Vargas you can select here in this software. And the Rasi, you'll often hear things pronounced with an S sound or an SH. So some people say Rasi, some people say Rashi. And down here we have Subtamsa, and some people say Subtamsha. Navamsa, Navamsha. So just to be aware of these different pronunciations. But there they are. There are 16 main Vargas. These charts. And there were more than 16 used in ancient times. So in the Sirius software, there are actually 20, four additional ones that can be selected. And you check which ones you want. Okay, so those are the Vargas, and they have names like this. Rashi or Rasi, that's the natal chart. So when you hear Rasi chart, that means natal. There's something called a Hora, Drakana, and so on the Panchanga, the Satamsa, etc. You have probably heard of the Navamsa chart. That's the most popular and the one that's most frequently used. But all of these Vargas are important and part of Vedic astrology. Now, let's start understanding some of the overlap here. The Satamsa chart. Satamsa means seven. The Navamsa, which is nine, and it has here 9 equals Navamsa, 7 equals Subtamsa. Those charts are harmonic charts. They are essentially identical to a harmonic chart, or as I like to call them, a vibrational chart. Some of the Vargas are harmonic charts, and some are not. Okay, you got it? <laughs> <laughs> that could be a little confusing right away. But let me say it again. Some of the Vargas are harmonic charts. For example, the Saptamsa and the Navamsa. 
they are calculated exactly the same way that we calculate a seventh harmonic chart and a ninth harmonic chart. Therefore, the term Navamsa is an alternative term for nine vibrational chart. But most of the others are not harmonic charts. Okay. So, now, a little refinement on what I just said. Keep in mind two things that are different about a Navamsa chart and a ninth harmonic chart. One is that typically a ninth harmonic chart is calculated in the tropical zodiac. It doesn't have to be, but most Western astrologers using harmonic charts use the tropical zodiac. Most, but not all, Vedic astrologers use the sidereal zodiac. So you have the difference in the zodiacs. But the calculations are the same. If you do a, a ninth harmonic chart in a sidereal zodiac, you will get the same exact positions that you get in Vedic astrology. Point number two, the way that the harmonic chart is interpreted, for example, the Navamsa chart in Vedic astrology is very different from the way anybody in the West would interpret a ninth harmonic chart. And the way we interpret harmonic charts in vibrational astrology is even more different because in Vedic astrology, a lot of emphasis is put on rulers and the 12 houses. And in Vedic astrology, a house is a sign or what we call in the West whole sign houses. So you have this pattern of 12 signs, whether you're looking at a, a natal chart, also known as a Rossi chart, or a Varga, there's this system of interpretation that's used with a heavy emphasis on rulers and the 12 houses. In vibrational astrology, we're only emphasizing the angular distance between things. So the interpretation is different. Now, point number two on this slide is that there are other terms for Vargas. They're sometimes called divisional charts. And in fact, the Navamsa chart is sometimes called D9. So you hear as Vedic astrologers say, I'm looking at the D9 chart, another term for Navamsa, or D7, another term for Saptamsa chart. Hora chart happens to be D2 and so on. And so you're dividing the chart into this many pieces. And they're also sometimes called harmonic charts. So this gets really confusing, or potentially can, because in I, I often prefer to use the term Jyotish, by the way, instead of Vedic astrology, because as many of you know, the Jyotish is not really written in the religious scriptures so much. Um, so it, a better term is Jyotish, and, and it's a, a more ancient term is Jyotish. The term Vedic astrology was introduced later. Anyway, people can get fussy about words, but I tend to use Jyotish, and more and more people do. So if I say Jyotish, it's another term for Vedic astrology. So in Jyotish, Vargas are often called, or sometimes called, harmonic charts. But from the point of view of harmonic astrology and vibrational astrology in the West, only some of the Vargas are harmonic charts in the way that we currently calculate harmonic charts in the West, in the modern Western astrology. So the term harmonic charts has a little bit of a different meaning in Jyotish in that all of those main 16 Vargas are, can also be called harmonic charts, but in Western astrology, only some of them are called harmonic charts. And this will become clearer as we go along. You have to just kind of take this one step at a time. Um, so I've already mentioned this in Vedic astrology today. Many Vedic astrologers will tell you that there are 16 Vargas. Well, there are 16 that are primary can, by today's standards and by some of the ancient literature. But there are many, many more 
that are described in the ancient literature too, or they're sometimes they're just hinted at or referred to. And there are some Vedic astrologers who say that in the oral tradition, not written down, there are also many, many others that were known about. I've heard Vedic astrologers say that. Okay. So I want to clarify that because if you hear somebody say there are 16 divisional charts in Vedic astrology, that's a common perspective in modern Vedic astrology and some of the ancient Vedic astrology. Remember that no school of astrology, no system of astrology is monolithic, you know, it is is just one way. There are many, many variations of Vedic astrology, just as there are many variations of modern Western astrology. So sometimes a statement is true within a certain lineage of information, a certain branch or approach to Vedic astrology. Okay, so there are 16 used by most modern Vedic astrologers, but there are also others. Okay. So, one way to think of a Varga is that it's a subdivision of the zodiac. A Hora chart, you divide um, into two sections. Each zodiac sign is divided into two sections. This is wrong. I have a typo here. Two sections of three degrees, uh, two sections of 15 degrees. Each zodiac sign, got a typo here. Shouldn't say three, should say 15. Each sign, you have a first half of a sign and second half. Very simple. First half of Aries versus second half of Aries. So the idea of the Vedic divisional charts is very simple. You're going to divide the zo each zodiac sign by some number of signs, and therefore you're dividing the whole circle instead of dividing the circle into 12 signs of 30 degrees. With the Hora chart, each you, uh, sign is divided into two pieces, so you have 24, 12 times 2 divisions. And by the way, it takes the ascendant, also in the midheaven, about one hour, Hora or hour, to travel 15 degrees. So it's the distance that would move across a house cusp typically, and with the midheaven, almost exactly, very, very close, one hour to cover 15, to move 15 degrees. So there's the horror chart. And you can divide each sign into three pieces of 10 degrees. Some of you are familiar with that, with, with decanates, or sometimes called decans. And you get the same root term, Dracana, three sections of 10 degrees. There's the Trim Samsa Varga, where you divide each sign into five sections, five uh, sections uh, within each sign. And the Saptamsa, which of course divides each sign by seven, and the Navamsa divides each sign by nine. So each Navamsa sign is three degrees, 20 minutes. Okay. If all those numbers made your head spin and you're not familiar with them, here's a picture of it. Here is the Navamsa, where we take the sky and we make nine zodiacs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In making nine consecutive zodiacs, instead of just one zodiac, you can also think of it as dividing each sign into nine pieces. It's the same result. If I divide each sign into nine pieces, I get nine zodiacs, as you can see here. And the way the Navamsa chart is done in modern times is you just start Aries with Aries Navamsa sign, you go right around. So you go through the first nine signs within the sign of Aries, you get to Sagittarius, you get to Taurus, and you're up to Capricorn. So you just go right around, and every 40 degrees, you get to Aries again, starts a new sign. Okay, so some of the key things here, I have three points. There are nine Navamsa signs in each 
Rossi sign, right? Very simple. We're going to build upon this, so just keep all the stuff in mind. There are nine Navamsa zodiacs in the entire circle, right? And the Navamsa signs are in zodiac order. As I just showed you, go Aries to Pisces, then Aries to Pisces again, nine times, and every sign is the same size comes out to 3 degrees 20 minutes. Also, in the middle of this wheel I mentioned, there are 108 Navamsa signs, if you count them. 9 signs times 12 is 108. There's that magic number. Many of you know 108 is a very special number. 108 beads in, in the prayer beads, 108 steps in the temples, 108 emphasized over and over and over again chant 108 times, and there are 108 Navamsa signs. So you see these Navamsa signs are fundamental. They're extremely important, just as important as the main zodiac. And that's why when you go to a Vedic astrologer, they will always do your Navamsa chart with the 108 zodiac signs. Let me tell you this, I, I probably have this in a future slide, but just thinking of it right now, it's very inspiring. Another word for each of these 108 signs is Pada. So it's because these 108 signs are used so often, they've been given their own name, Pada. Well, Pada comes from the same root as Ped in English, as in foot. Head, like a pedal of a bicycle, a pedestrian, the foot. And each one of these is a step. So there are 108 steps. And there are one, literally 108 steps in uh, some of the um, walkways and, uh, you know, in, in, in the temples. Okay. Uh, stairs. <laughs> That's the word I think of. Going up a flight of stairs, 108 steps, or 108 steps in a, in a walkway. So those are the 100 steps to enlightenment, because the astrology chart is often seen as being a reflection of the divine cosmos in our life and connecting us to the sacred, which we also have that idea in modern Western astrology, and we have the same idea in vibrational astrology. Okay, so that's the Navamsa chart. And what is interesting is that in Vedic astrology, these divisions of the sky into more pieces, like 108 pieces, is so fundamental, so integral, so vital to who you are, where you're going, and your whole spiritual path and meaningful path in your life. In that way, Vedic astrology and vibrational astrology completely agree. So a lot of what we're doing in vibrational astrology is not so new and different and wild and speculative. A lot of these concepts are already built into some of the ancient systems of astrology. And the philosophical perspective, the theoretical framework, the intuition is exactly the same, that there is this intricate tapestry. And we don't just look at the 12 signs. 12 signs are like, like a basic notes in the cosmos. But in order to get the rich symphony of the cosmic music, we need to look at all of these layers that are going on. So here we're seeing how the intuition, the philosophical perspective, the understanding of the universe is exactly the same in Vedic and in vibrational and somewhat different from modern Western astrology, which doesn't layer as much. Yes, there are essential dignities and there are terms and so on. So there's a kind of layering there, but it's, it's just, I don't know, it's just different. We're using the same kinds of charts Saptamsa, Navamsa, and other ones that are very similar. I think vibrational astrology is more clearly aligned with this Vedic way of thinking. Very, very similar. And it comes through in, in Western astrology as well. Okay. 
So that's why when you hear about Vargas, also called divisional charts, also called harmonic charts in Vedic astrology, you hear about harmonic charts in 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 the West. Uh, there's some similar feelings about it, as we're going to see some also big differences in the way the interpretation is done, but the feeling of it's very similar. Okay, now we're looking at a round wheel style. I'm going to show both round wheels and the, some of the wheel styles that are used in, in Vedic astrology as well, because I want to make this an east-west integration and not just, oh, here's some Vedic for Western astrologers, but let's make this a, a total integration. Now, let me point this out. You probably know that in Vedic astrology, there are some, there's something called nakshatras. The nakshatras are hugely important. You cannot do very much of anything in astrology without them. How many nakshatras are there? 27. And so we start with Aries and we go 127th of the zodiac, which is 13 degrees 20 minutes. So here each sign is not divided by a simple number because what happens is this first nakshatra called Ashvini covers the first 13 degrees 20 minutes. The next 13 degrees 20 minutes of Aries is the next nakshatra called Bharani. That takes us to 26 degrees 40 minutes and then the next nakshatra overlaps. It starts near the end of Aries and into Taurus. So the way in Vedic astrology that we divide the sky is rich. It's more complex. It's not just taking each sign as the only unit. And this is really important because what it means is that in Vedic astrology, we are not restricted to only 12. It's not 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 over and over again, which is the tendency in Western astrology. They divide the circle by 27, which does not divide into 12. So you get this more fluid feeling that there's not just 12-ness built into the structure of the cosmos from the astrological perspective. So these are the 27 nakshatras, and of course that also agrees with vibrational astrology. That's why vibrational astrology has a heritage in many systems and it has similarities with different ways of thinking. Now, this leads to another point. There are 27 nakshatras, basic building blocks, just as basic and important as the 12 signs. And we have the 108 Navamsa signs. So, so far we've learned about these three layers, the normal Rashi chart, the 12 signs, the 27 nakshatras, the 108 Navamsa signs, also known as the Padas. Well, do the nakshatras and the Navamsa signs have a direct relationship? Yes, they do. Very direct because there are four Navamsa signs in each nakshatra. 27 times 4 is 108. So in this first nakshatra of Ashvini, you have Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, the first four signs. Then starting with the next nakshatra of Barani, you have Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio. So there are four nakshatra signs in each four Navamsa signs in each nakshatra. Well, you could, another way of saying that is that there are four padas, which is another word for nakshatra, for another word for Navamsa sign. There are four padas in each nakshatra. And this leads to our awareness of the interweaving of these different layers, how the nakshatra signs and the Navamsa signs interweave in a very simple way with four 
and the Vamsa signs in each nakshatra. Also, the 27 nakshatras weave their way in and out of the 12 signs because at the beginning of each fire sign, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, the nakshatra signs line up at these three points. So a nakshatra, this nakshatra is called Magha, which is regal, it's like a king or queen, is at the beginning of Leo. So there's no overlap. When you go from Cancer to Leo, you also change nakshatra. Same thing at Sagittarius. A new nakshatra begins at the beginning of Sagittarius. So the, the nakshatra signs come on the beat of the Rashi signs at the beginning of the fire signs. Did you follow that? <laughs> if you're new to Vedic astrology, you're getting used to the terminology, I hope, and you're starting to get familiar with this interweaving and how these different divisions relate to each other and interweave with each other. It's another idea in Vedic astrology is this idea of the interweaving. There's a word sutra. Sutra can mean an, an aphorism, like a statement, a, a wise statement that you would have in a book. Sutra also means thread. Just like we have the word suture in English for, you, you know, um, like in, in uh, if someone has a cut and you have sutures and you stitch, suture stitching. So sutra are the threads. So the cosmic threads build a beautiful tapestry. And we live in this intricately woven tapestry. This is part of the feeling you can get in Vedic astrology. Not all Vedic astrologers have this feeling or intuition, but I think it is built in to a lot of the tradition of Jyotish. It's built into the way of thinking. Okay, so you're starting to feel this and you feel the similarity with vibrational astrology, the interweaving. So again, Vedic astrology and vibrational astrology have a lot in common. We're also going to see some important differences as well. Now, uh, so here we're looking at the Nakshad, the uh, sorry, the Navamsa signs again. Here are the nine zodiacs around the outside, and what are all these lines? These lines show where the uh, it show, well, it's showing a few things. First of all, it's showing what I explained in the previous um, slide that Aries begins, the uh, Navamsa sign Aries, begins at the beginning of Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. They line up. So the not only uh, do, do the nakshatras line up, start at the beginning of each fire sign, is what I said in the last slide, that a nakshatra so sign starts right at the beginning of each fire sign. And when you look at the Navamsa signs, Aries starts at the beginning of the fire signs. Now, look at the beginning of the earth signs. They begin with Capricorn. Because you would go through the nine Navamsa signs of Aries and then get to Capricorn. And if you go around, you'll notice that Capricorn is at the beginning of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. So Capricorn Navamsa is at the beginning of the earth signs. I've drawn that in brown. Let me just show you one more. The air signs, so these 12 Rashi signs, the, the air sign begin with Navamsa Libra. I've drawn that in light blue. And the water signs all begin with Cancer. What's happening is that the first Navamsa sign of each Rasi sign is the cardinal sign of that element. <laughs> Did you follow that? It's actually very simple. But it's this interweaving. 
In other words, it's this beautiful interweaving. Again, let me let me show you again. It's very, very, very simple. All I'm saying is that the earth signs all begin with cardinal earth. What's cardinal earth? Capricorn. Air signs all begin with cardinal air, which is Libra. Water signs all begin with cardinal water, which is Cancer. And the fire signs all begin with cardinal fire, which is Aries. They all begin with the cardinal sign of the Navamsa. So it creates this integration that as you begin each zodiac sign, as you enter Taurus, 30 degrees after the beginning, the Navamsa sign begins with its cardinal. And cardinal is often a kind of starting point. So you get this, like, uh, harmony, that the Navamsa sign comes into harmony, comes into its cardinal dimension of the same element. So it has a consistency, an agreement. It's almost like somebody singing a harmony note to someone. Uh, so as you enter Gemini, the Navamsa goes into the cardinal air sign of Libra. So that's what this is showing, just how each Rasi sign, this term Rasi, or sometimes I'll say Rashi, same thing, is a nice word to have. It means you're normal, good old zodiac. <laughs> you know, Rashi means you're good old natal chart. So the, the, uh, the, each Rashi sign begins, uh, has a Navamsa sign at the beginning of that Rashi sign, which is the cardinal of the same element. And you get this nice consistency. I'm introducing you to these tapestries. There's a lot of these, th they're like threads knitting together. So that, this is the important point. The nakshatras and the Navamsa signs do not exist completely isolated and separated from each other. That's the key point. There are these threads that tie it all together and they make life work, and they make life whole and complete and integrated, rather than schizoid, you know, like completely separate things. This is part of the intuition and sense of what's going on, and it agrees very well with how we think in vibrational astrology. Now here's something that's interesting. Another idea that you get in uh, Vedic astrology is Vargotama. So if you're a Vedic astrologer, you're very familiar with Vargotama. Let me just turn this off. I'm almost done. 32 minutes into this. I'm going to stop here with Vargotama. But Vargotama means when the Navamsa sign and the Rasi sign are the same. They come into resonance with each other. And let me pick up with this in part two of this series, because I want to keep each of these uh, presentations to about a half hour. I'm at 33 minutes, so you don't, you know, get overhooded here. Let's just do about a half hour each. So I'll pick up with part two in this series with the Vargotama, with the places in the Zodiac where the Navamsa sign is the same as the Rasi sign. And again, this emphasizes the connections, that these things do not exist separately. And when they get sewn together, these sutras, when they get sewn together, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. Can you feel the intuition behind this? Okay, let's pick up with it, and we'll look at what these, how the Vargotama relates to the Rashi signs in another beautiful pattern. Okay, I'll see you in part two of this series of East-West Integration, where Vedic meets vibrational <laughs> astrology. Okay, my friends, see you in part two. God bless. Namaste.